another wild property, huge building on 25 acres. We're going to be talking about this like it's going to be a wedding venue or an event center or something like that. But there's no reason why you couldn't make this a house. At 8,300 square feet and 25 acres, I was talking to a builder just last week and he said he's seeing $150 to $200 a square foot for new construction. That would put this place at like over a million and a half dollars, but it's only in the 300s. Come along with me today. We're going to go into every nook and cranny in this property. I'll take you up in the bird and we'll even analyze this as a business and in a fun way. Have I ever given you boring? If you think I've given you some solid real estate advice, let's have some more adventures together. Buckle up and hold on for the aerials and the bloopers at the end. You can't go without the bloopers. Here she is. I'm excited. You got over there, got over here. There is a lot to show you here. All right, let's do it. Now, how am I supposed to do that? Uh, I can't do that. Place is huge, 8,300 square feet, 8333 or something like that. I'm gonna park here in the front like I own the joint. Actually, I'm gonna park in the parking lot. How about that? That's a novel idea. This is gonna be a complicated shoot. It's gonna be a complicated video. There's so much involved in this place. I'm gonna show you the property, but I think most importantly, is I'm gonna show you how to be successful in this business. Now, I've always loved business. You probably don't know, but I started in business when I was 17. It's never been about a money thing for me, it's a game. And the game is how to make the phone ring, how to make the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. That's my game. So I'm just being real honest, real upfront, transparent, naked, whatever you wanna call it. You really don't wanna see me naked, but you might wanna see me transparent. This is a very, very super cool property, but it's complicated and we're just gonna have to go through it step by step. But if you are tired of the rat race and you wanna do something and you thought about a wedding venue, it's not a silly idea. Half of every bride's budget is spent on the venue. Now, of course, I'm just learning a whole lot of this stuff because I wanna, give you the good information so you can be successful at it. It's a hundred billion dollar industry. You got 25 acres here. So now some of this stuff is topographically challenging, but that doesn't mean you couldn't put a cabin on here. Look at the view here. It goes on forever. So just like in Gatlinburg, they put those, uh, they put those cabins on the hillside. You can put the cabins here too. It's not a problem. Tell us what you think about this place in the comments below. I think all of us would like to know what everybody else is thinking about this property. All right, when Sam Walton started his business, right? We all know Sam Walton Walmart. What was it, a five and dime? And then he just started adding things on. You're right on the highway here, which is good. Liberty is like just a couple miles. The airport is just a couple miles, like right there, right there. And then 15 minutes to Green River Lake and Campbellsville. You're not far from Somerset. It's a, it's a big area, it's not Lexington, but you know what, it's not Lexington. The rules are less. The people are nice, more laid back. Of course, I'm generalizing. But this is country. This isn't like everybody tight as a drum, you know, in the city. So let's go back to Sam Walton. Why did he have this hardware store, five and dime, then he added food? Actually, I know the guy who helped him start the food. Lifelong lessons from him. Thank you, Kirk. Why did Sam Walton add all, all those things? For diversification. And the people are in the store anyway. They might as well buy. Could you make it as a full-on wedding venue? Probably. Could you make it as a full-on barbecue joint or something like that? Probably. Could you make it as a cafe and an ice cream shop? Maybe. But how about all three of those together? Now we got something. This is a dry county. That doesn't mean you can't do the BYOB thing. That's a $20 pickup truck right there. All right, let me give you first disclosure, right? I can't even spell farm. I spell E-I-E-I-O. I'm not an agent, I'm not a mortgage broker. I'm not a town official. Nothing, I'm nothing. I'm not even anybody's assistant, I'm just nothing. When I tell you things, you have to verify it, right? Caveat emptor, buyer beware. You have to do your due diligence, especially in a commercial property like this. This is gonna be in the 300s, I think it's a screaming deal. In the 300s, the mortgage payment's gonna be like 1500 bucks a month. If you can't pay a mortgage payment for 1500 bucks a month, come on now. And remember, you're not paying it. You're providing a wonderful service. You're connecting people 
with something they're willing to pay for. You're not paying for it. Your customers are paying for it. So this kind of gives you a nice little retirement nest egg, plus a whole lot of fun in the meantime. All right, let's talk about the winery. This is a dry county. Again, you've got to check this in your own due diligence. I think you should be able to, you're over 10 acres, you should be able to get a small farm winery license in here so easy. So what is that going to give you? Well, you're going to make your own wine that you sell right here for souvenirs and for the wedding venue. And the bride has to buy the wine here. So you can't BYOB. You're going to sell pop and you're going to pay 38 cents for it. And you're going to sell them for a dollar or two dollars. And all those little things are little streams of income. And the wine, it's going to cost you about four or five dollars to make the wine. You and your kid can make it. You and your wife can make it. Your wife and her brother-in-law can make it or whatever. You can hire somebody to make the wine. It costs you about four or five dollars a bottle for nice wine for two, three dollars a bottle for sweet, cheaper wine. And you're going to sell it for fifteen dollars a bottle. And they have to buy it. They have to commit to so much. OK, wedding planner can tell you all that stuff. So they say, OK, how many are you going to have? A hundred. Are they heavy drinkers, light drinkers, non-drinkers? OK, they're heavy drinkers. You're going to need two kegs of beer and 15 cases of wine or whatever the number is. But there's charts for that online. A wedding planner can help you. It's good to align yourself, align yourself and ally yourself, having allies, right, uh, with wedding planners and people who are in the industry because they're going to recommend you. You're going to recommend them. That is a self-licking popsicle. This is the wedding spot. It's all cordoned off. You can slide that door open. Now you got a wedding spot for 350 instead of just a hundred and a quarter. And I don't know what the number is. You're under the fire marshal regulation for sprinkler systems. Yay! Because sprinkler systems suck and they're expensive, period. So you're under that, but you still probably have the fire marshal guy come out or the local fire chief or the state guy and just say, hey, am I doing anything wrong? What they're gonna do is they're gonna tell you exactly what you need to do. They're gonna say, hey, dude, you only got one uh, smoke alarm here. You need uh, two in this room, for instance, or whatever. And they're the most helpful guys. Believe me, they are not trying to scorch your business. They're there to help you because God forbid something happens and you're non-compliant. Guess what? Your ass is in a sling. But if you got to sign off on those guys, you're golden. Makes sense, right? That's one of the, watch this, watch this. I'm going to turn the faucet on right here, the hot water. Check it out. Turn it on, water comes on. Shut it off, goes off. That is efficient. That's cool. Or it's hot. What the hell is that? You got to fix that. There are a couple things in here that are a little, you know, like, you know me, I'm like your brother. I always try to point out the good stuff. I try to point out the bad stuff too. If there's anything that's like real hinky or something like that, I'm going to tell you, you know, have Ken fix that or whatever. There's a heater and then they got the pipe off of it. Don't worry about those. Those are great. Everybody's got them around here. You could call Jackie Campbell, Campbell's Heating and Air. We love, love, love those guys. They're close to our hearts because they always respond to everything. And I don't even know if they'd come down this far, but they could put up a mini split or two in here and you'd be golden. They're super quiet, super efficient. I want this for my barn. Isn't that the best? I might call these people and say, hey, I'm not gonna send you any buyers unless you give me that thing. Anyway, it's really cute. I have no idea what this is. Maybe this is if you're getting <laughs> married and you change your mind. All right, I thought you were going to hang yourself or something like that. Now, that's after a couple years. All right, so you got this big, big patio door thingy here. There's like four panels on one and three panels on the other. And it only weighs about 9,000 pounds. But what's cool is you just open this up. My luck, it's going to fall right off the hinges or something like that. You open this up and then you've got the, the room that'll hold 200 and then you've got all this. See, it's a little complicated. So for you and I just talking here, what we're gonna talk about is, this is the wedding venue. Then we're gonna talk about, maybe this is the barbecue business. This is your uh, barbecue shack. People will drive, you know, people in Austin drive out to Dripping Springs to Salt Lake, Austin, Texas. They go out to Salt Lake. Well, that's like an hour. You just hop in the car, and it's a nice little drive out in the country. Same here, but you have to market it properly. Could you make money in the barbecue business here? Absolutely, if you know the tricks. Cindy and I looked into it. It's a lot of work. We're getting too damn old for all that stuff. <laughs> but you got proteins which are expensive. What's your slack adjuster? In other words, you're not gonna make much money on the barbecue maybe. Your slack adjuster is gonna be maybe ice cream. 
or train wreck fries or something like that. Something you could get $12 for that only costs you two bucks to make. You know, you throw some barbecue, which you already got anyway, or maybe you got it left over from last night. You put that on top of the, the, the chips, the nachos, uh, some cheese sauce, some chives, whatever, uh, some bacon on the top, costs you two bucks and you sell it for 12. That's how you make money in the restaurant business. I have no earthly idea what the f this thing is, but this is, it's kind of, like she's got this here and then there's wood. I, I, I don't get it. Maybe this was the original building and this was the original kitchen, God forbid, but it's here, might as well keep it, right? Got the turlet. I'm excited about this. Here's a shower. I'm excited about this because it's got potential. If you say you're an entrepreneur and then you say, oh, I just wanna make money in my sleep, you're dreaming, man, you're dreaming. I'm just telling you. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you have to add value to people, add value to properties. That's how you become an entrepreneur. That's how you take a property like this in the threes and you turn it into a $500,000, $800,000 a year business. This cute little saloon. I'm telling you, man, can you imagine? I don't know, whatever. These, I guess, are either massage rooms with happy ending or maybe changing rooms for the wedding party, probably. You can change there, have a drink there, get drunk before you get married because anybody who's sober sure ain't getting married, I can tell you that. I actually love my wife. You know that. You've seen her. She's a hot tamale. We've been together like 35 years and she's still a hot tamale. Now here's, here's another trick here. So we got this door, this closes up. Cute as heck. It's called board and batten. And that's called X brace. Sometimes you see them as a Z brace. So you got the wedding going on here. You can still have your barbecue restaurant here. Now, where are you going to have all this barbecue restaurant? They got some crazy, of course, there's no light in here. I'm going to, you're going to kill me for this. But anyway, there's flat top, a steak grill. There's an ice cream cooler. Now, I don't know if this goes. You have to call Ken. His number's right here. And ask, hey, what conveys? Maybe it's negotiable. Maybe you can buy it. Maybe you're a strong buyer with strong credit or cash. And they'll throw it in. You never know. You got to ask. And you got to ask Ken. This is one of those number 10 racks. You can't even see it. It's too dark. But they got a great thing. Train, a lot of train air units. I wish they were on right now because I'm sweating under my movies. They got TVs up so you can do all that stuff. Why people want to go out to dinner and then watch TV is beyond me. Why people want to watch TV at all is beyond me. But I'm appreciative if you're watching YouTube. How's that for a double standard? Yes. So there's racist, sexist, and double standardist. I am a double standardist. Absolutely. <laughs> the other things, no, not at all. If you really know me, <laughs> you know, I kid around a lot, but, but I'm definitely a double standardist. Beautiful. This is one of those one PC deal things here. The guy who invented that's rolling over in his grave right now. There's a lot of stuff that's all compliant for, for folks. You know, you got the fire lights here and everything. Just please call the fire chief. Have him meet you out here. The state fire marshal. Cindy knows these guys. She can hook you up with these guys. Ken can help you. Baby changing station. If the babies try to be changed here and it's so bad that you all have to get in the shower, you and the baby and the bassinet and everything, wow, that's some Kentucky splatter right there. All right, water heaters, another train, nothing stops a train. These look to be fairly new. Ken will tell you, they've got a 16 camera uh, security system with the DVR. Alibi, that's a cute name for a security system, isn't it? And they got music, uh, cassette. Yeah, baby, you could play all vintage music. This part here has got the ISO on it. This bo box is full. This is the reason I always show you these boxes. This box is full, ice cream, deep freeze, uh, machine, machine, that one's good. Uh, range, uh, shunt trip feed, okay, great. Everything's marked properly. This 
still has plenty of room. So you are in good shape. You got 200 amp service there, 200 amp service there. That will keep you for a while. Hopefully for a long while. Remember, 25 acres, you can put them cabins down there. Of course, you're not gonna run off of this power, but check this out. We'll go this way. So here's your barbecue thing. You put the smoker in the back, have it shoot through the window. Through, I'm sorry, shoot through the wall or whatever. This is an Ansel system. They put those tanks in there that are charged. If it gets too hot, this thing goes out. I think this, this thing pops off. Here, let's try it. No, no, no. And it's pressurized and it puts the fire out immediately because fat that's burning is a SOB to get out. And there it is there. This is expensive. I will put down here, I have no earthly clue, but I can tell you that hood ain't cheap either. I will put an estimate here, just a guesstimate. It's so many dollars per foot for the hood. And then the Ansel system, I don't know. I'm gonna look. And you got your little hand sink there. This is great, all the stainless steel. You know, you can buy this stainless steel stuff at the uh, restaurant supply. Now it's not gonna fit in your spot maybe, but you could buy it for your deck. So if you're, like a, if you're like a barbecue guy like me, I just put this stuff out on the deck. That way I don't have to buy treated wood and then paint it every year and make Lowe's rich. Saying, ordering, and you put it up there and you, and you look up and you got to squint like this. Ordering, you got to do it like that. And then that's how you do it. Now this little guy, I will show you what this is. There you go. You could leave this unlocked actually because my hands ain't fitting through that hole. I can tell you that. I would not be the burglar. Now I might ship one of my kids through there. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. We've never done that, never, never, never. Never gotten a house back from being a landlord. Oh, I could tell you the stories. We've never gotten a house back that the people locked us out and we had to go shove a kid through the window. <laughs> if I had a dollar. Anyway, look at how nice that is. <gasps> oh, I would love to have one of those at my house. Nice triple sink. Then there's a little sink there, or ice maker, or whatever. Well, that's hot and cold. It's not an ice maker. It's just unbelievable. It's all done for you. You couldn't even begin. If that is 50 grand, can you imagine how fast three something goes like that? So here's your barbecue thing in the back. And this is the ice cream. I scream, I scream, we all scream for ice cream. You knew I was gonna say that. I have no idea what this is out here, but you could certainly put a whole bunch of stuff out here. You got music, more TVs. Good Lord, can't be without a TV. Learning something from a TV is a great idea. I'm gonna put down here how long this is. It's way longer than a bowling alley. It might even be two bowling alleys. It's all concrete, can't hurt that, stained concrete. Okay, so I got a buddy in Florida who's got a wine and beer supply. He's got a small farm winery and he's got a wedding venue. And I asked him, I said, hey Tim, what one thing in, in of those three horses, what one thing makes the most amount of money? And he says, you know what? They're all about the same. You can't have one without the other. The wedding venue brings people in, they buy the wine, and then sometimes they start buying uh, wine supplies as well. You got to advertise in the right places. First thing that comes to mind is like the knot or wedding spot. You, you got to have a website. You got to have a Facebook page and it's got to be fun. You got to post often with really beautiful images. SEO and keywords are really important, but if you think you're going to game Google, you are wrong. So you're going to have to pay to play a little bit. You're going to have to get a specialist who can help you. Can you learn it yourself? Maybe. Do you want to? You shouldn't. You should be wanting to uh, network with people and go to the chamber and have events. Have the chamber things here. Have the Lions Club here. Absolutely, that's gonna, all, that's gonna get you all that exposure that you really need. Testimonials and reviews. I cannot tell you, I mean, hey, I, I don't have to tell you anything. Have you ever bought anything on Amazon? What do you do? You look at the reviews. You ever bought on eBay? What do you do? You make sure that the person's legit. Is this a legit person? Is this a legit company? Or is he gonna hose me? I got all the details here. Let's see, uh, take a sign, I didn't do that. I can't have to come back down. Ha ha, he'll make me come down. Add cabins, 25 acres, extra cash flow, full kitchen, pond with dock, which you saw out there, first thing. 
outdoor dining, Ansel fire suppression, DSL internet, 16 camera security system, two water heaters and an instant heat, septic system and a grease trap by the garbage in the back. Now, here's the important stuff. And I'll, I'll put this all online and you can see the photographs. It actually has this all marked out. And this is 176, if I can see that correctly, 176 feet from uh, back to back. It says 33, 3200 square feet of porch. Uh, I'll figure it all out for you so you don't have to worry about it. Now, when we were flying, you saw there's another couple cute buildings over here. Here, I got to put this up because the phone goes crazy. There was a couple other really fun, cute buildings over here. And they, they do not convey. They're not part of it. It goes to the end of your parking lot where there's a fence and you're done. But here's the building. And then you saw the little firehouse. That's the uh, Clementsville Fire Department or whatever it's called. Uh, they've got a little chunk out of there. And then you start again. And then there's another little something there. And then you continue on. You've got road frontage for this much, then this much, then this much. What does it give you? Well, this is pretty steep. It looks like there's a creek down there, but it gives you access in here. So you could cut a road in, driveway, whatever, and just shoot a cabin in down there or come this way and go along the side. You got a lot of options because you got extra land. Worst case scenario, you can lop some off. You can lop it off here, sell the rest to the neighbors and uh, recoup some of your initial investment. Here's my advice to you. And again, I'm nothing, I'm nobody. I don't know anything and I'm not certified or licensed to do anything except maybe make wine. And that I'm very good at. But here's my advice to you. If you can borrow this whole amount, I would borrow it, especially at today's rates. You could walk into the local bank here. You could walk into the bank not too far from here who uh, we, we deal with. If you've got a good portfolio and you've got good credit and you've got some cash laying around, you could probably get a 100% loan. If you did, your payments would be somewhere like 1500 bucks or something like that. Taxes are gonna be super cheap down here. Your insurance is gonna be whatever it is, shop that around. But I would borrow the whole amount because we've got inflation, we've got people selling their stuff and then not knowing what to put it back into. You don't wanna sit on cash. You wanna reinvest it. Get this wholly funded and then take the rest of the cash that you've got from selling your house or whatever and put it into some marketing, sprucing this up you know, just like, it just going to take a little stuff to get going. You don't have to do very much at all. There's a couple boards down there that are just a little bit yucky on the side. You need two boards down there. That's a couple hundred bucks. Want my opinion? Get rid of that spool thing. Just get rid of There's two or three of them here. Just roll them down the, the pond, in the pond. Only kidding. Roll them down over the hill. But you could put a couple uh, bourbon barrels there. And, and people would have a place to lean on, whatever. Get all the weeds out of the parking lot. You got parking for, I don't know how many cars. I'll get the square footage, I'll put it here, and we'll calculate how many cars you can put there, because there is a calculation for that. I mean, literally, I would think you could be in and out here for, you know, several hundred dollars. Uh, what are you gonna need in here? You've got fridges. Fryers go here. They're right in the other room. Um, I, I don't know what to tell you. You got to have fries. You got to have all those things that are profit centers. Fries, soda, ice cream. Those are all super huge profit centers. You know, soda, the cup costs more than the product that's in it. And you get two bucks for that, you're cruising. Make iced tea. Have your mom come in. Have your grandma come in and make iced tea in the morning. Say, hey, get out of bed. Come make iced tea for us. You know what? They'd probably be delighted to help you with this business endeavor. Who doesn't want to be in business for themselves? I've been doing it for a long time. Look how cute these are. And look how silly that looks. I don't know. That's my opinion. You have to tell me. Of course, the sellers are probably going, oh my God, are you kidding me? Why did we hire this company? He's insulting our stuff. You are important to me. Your success is important to me. I want you to come down here. I want you to buy this place or whatever. You don't can. I say I. I'm doing the video, so I'm saying I. <laughs> I want you to come down here. I want you to be important. I want you to be important. You are important. I want you to come down here. I want you to buy this place from Ken. And I want you to succeed. And I will do whatever I can to help you. I mean, really, anybody who knows me will tell you 
I, I do that for anybody. You can buy me lunch, I'll give you a bunch of ideas, stuff that's worked for me, stuff that's not worked for me, and stuff I've wasted my money on. Glad to share that with you. Anyway, I think this is a real deal. Now, don't go posting on the comments and saying, well then why don't you buy it? Cause I got other shit to do. I got all kinds of businesses I'm running. <laughs> and when you, run, when you can run one business, you can run a whole bunch of other businesses. I had a banker one time, he called me, he goes, what do you know about commercial and industrial buildings? I go, it's a rental. It's the same thing as I do with everything else. It's fine. And he goes, oh, okay, all right, I'll give you the money. You're right. <laughs> a business is business. Increase revenue, decrease expenses. That's business. You just gotta make sure you got a good business and then a business sense. You can't just do stupid stuff. Don't go in here and think you're gonna, you know, oh, I'm gonna paint the floor because I wanna make it look pretty. Bullshit. You leave this floor just the way it is. If you buy it, you can do whatever you want with it, but you know what I'm saying. Don't spend the money on this. It'll cost you $2,000 in paint. You don't need to do that, it's fine. You do that later when you get super successful and you've had three reviews that said, God, everything was perfect. I was treated like a king and a queen. My whole family was treated well. The food was amazing. The wine was out of sight. The venue was great. They never complained one bit. They worked with us on the payments, but the gray floor is terrible. So we're gonna give it a two star. You will never have that, I promise you. We can spruce things up later as you become more successful. Get the cash flow in. There's no reason why you can't make $500,000 a year at this place. I'm just telling you. Don't believe me? Maybe we should talk about business. I'm glad to help. Yeah, there's a couple things in here that are hinky. I'm sure they did the best they could. This is a huge endeavor. This thing was not built overnight or for free. This, there's a lot that goes into this and people do the best they can as fast as they can. So you got a uh, metal roof up there, metal ceiling rather. There's a lot to this. You could not replicate this building with the concrete, the wood, the metal, and then the equipment. Oh my Lord, even the porches. I mean, porches ain't cheap anymore, right? Lumber, metal, all that stuff. Ken will walk you through this property, show you each thing that he thinks is something that's a potential issue or could be a whole lot better for cheap. Then you also want to get a home inspector and they're going to come out here and inspect the whole building. You also, you're also going to want to do your due diligence, which of course is things like going to the town and saying, hey, I want to put a small farm winery in there. How do I go about it? Call the state. They have the whole Department of Agriculture loves agricultural things, uh, clearly, right? And they're gonna help you and tell you what the deal is. Hey, this is Casey County. I think it's Casey County, don't hold me to it. It's Casey County. This is K uh, Casey County, we wanna do a small farm winery for a wedding venue uh, business. They're glad to help you and tell you who to call down here, who's gonna be friendly and help you out. You're gonna call the fire marshal, you're gonna do all that stuff. That's all part of your due diligence. If you wanna have a survey, that survey's fine. If you want to have another survey, you're going to do a survey in the due diligence period. That's what you do in due diligence. And you're going to have extra time for that. So maybe 15 extra days and then 30 to close or something like that. But you could be in this in the fall for wedding season. It's just August and I'm hot. It's just August. You could be in here for some of the fall wedding season. You could. Those are little things that you need an agent to represent you, and you need an agent who understands commercial and industrial property, like Ken does. He's an awful nice guy. He's not as smart as me, but don't tell him I said that. He's got longer hair and he's way more fit than I am. I drink more wine and I have more fun. I guarantee you that. Clearly, he doesn't have any fun because he doesn't drink wine. That's the only way to have fun. Just tell me. You can tell the heat's getting to me a little bit. <laughs> I'm really glad you stuck with me to the end here. And I'm really glad that we got to see this property together. I just got here. I'd never been here before. I hit the ground running on this wonderful summer day. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. I guarantee you it cost you $750 to build this place. Maybe a little more. Don't touch that dial. I got aerials for you. And the bloopers. You can't go without the bloopers. Could you make more money if you lived in the city? Yeah, absolutely. But what's your quality of life? It's all about the lifestyle. That's what everybody wants. Money's good, but if you don't have a good lifestyle, where are you at? Isn't this just glorious? God, it's so beautiful out here.
to do a U-turn, go back about 15 or 20 miles, 17 miles, you'd be at Green River Lake, 8,200 acre lake, just beautiful. Now the airport's just like two miles away. So if you've got guests flying in, they got their own plane flying in right here. It's great to have an airport close by. We had a place out here that we sold just recently. They were coming up on the road. My favorite road name right there, Chicken Gizzard Road. Don't ask me. I don't make this stuff up. Talk about a beautiful location. There's a creek down there on the left. And in that field, one, two, there's four deer in that field down there. I'm gonna find out what this trucking company, industrial park, I'm not really sure it's not an industrial park, but I'm gonna find out what this is. This is warehouse. Ah, it's Tartar Gates, Tartar Industries. There you go. You know, people are like, oh, you'll never be able to make a living in a little town. Well, they come from an even smaller town just south of here of Liberty, I'll look it up. You think they're doing okay? I would say probably yes. They sell farm gates, they sell all kinds of equipment for four-wheelers, side-by-sides, make little food plots, all kinds of stuff. All like uh, ag lifestyle stuff. Greater boxes to keep your driveway nice, things like that. If you're on 10 acres or more, you probably need some tartar products, or you might have some tartar products. I know we sure do. We appreciate them. They do an awful lot for the area. That's feeding a lot of families. Here she is. and they're gonna come out here and inspect the whole building. And you're gonna also do your due diligence in the meantime, which is, which is things, you're also gonna to wanna to do your due, blah, blah, blah. You also, you're also gonna to wanna to do your due diligence, which of course is things like going to the town and saying, hey, I can't wait to hear your opinions. So comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Also go to our website, bluegrassteam.com slash home finder to tell us what your ideal property looks like and we'll send it to you. Right, Mojo?